Oh, y'all coming and going. <laughs> we are having a really interesting day today, y'all. So everything was working fine in our pre-show, and for some reason, nothing was working as we got ourselves queued up. So we're just going to kick off from where we are right here, right now. I'm Marie with Living Felt. You're going to meet uh, each of the gals as they come up. Thank you so much for being here, and super sorry about those technical difficulties because... Yeah, it was all working in the pre-roll. So anyway, we are here now today. We are needle felting these cute little germs. These little guys were designed by our friend Rachel Nader, who is her uh, shop is called Micro Makery. And you know what's fun about these is she is also a medical artist. And she originally designed these as fun little reminders for her family to wash their hands. And Long before things like escalated to where they are now, we, uh, you know, uh, spoke with her and she was just so happy to share the project with all of us. And so we're glad to bring them to you today. They're really fun to make. The gals brought some of their own that they're going to share. So um, let's do that. Like, uh, let's just say hi to a few people and welcome you all to the show. So I know I saw Wendy in Alaska, Anne in Connecticut, Patricia in California, Kathy, and a whole bunch of folks in uh, Canada. We have Christina in Poland. Thank you all and everyone for joining us today. We are here in Central Texas. I know many of you are kind of locked down at home or not able to work. Right now we're still able to be here and so grateful for that and we're just glad to have this time with you live today. So we're going to have a fun tutorial needle felting these little germs and I'm going to let the gals show you the ones that they brought too. Hey everybody, how are y'all doing? Happy Wooly Wednesday! <laughs> so I made a couple little germs. Um, I actually got to sit down with my stepson. He's 10 and he needle felted one as well. So that's going to be his little guy. He got kind of crazy with the colors and, and had a lot of fun with it. So that's Oliver's and Oliver if you're watching this, hi! I hope you're having a good day. So that's going to be Monkey's. And then I've got this little guy that I made. I kind of just Googled different images of germs and found a shape that I liked and, and just had a little bit of fun with it. So that's my little guy. And I think Miss Ann is going to jump in next and show you what she's got. Bye, y'all. Thank you, Hannah. This is my germ right here. This is my little buddy. Um, I think no one is shocked that it's pinks and purples. <laughs> and um, yep, I had to add an extra an extra little leg to so that he would stand up and he still kind of stands on his hands, but so much fun to make and uh, I decided to add some neps on top for just some fun texture. Thanks so much for hanging with us, y'all. I hope you enjoy today's show and Give us a give us a thumbs up down below. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, and Thank you, everyone, so much. So if you missed the announcement before the live show, you can grab a supply list. So we don't have a kit for this, but the supplies are super easy. I'm going to show you what those are. And you can download a supply list on our website. We have posted a short URL. It's like a tiny URL forward slash needle felt germs. So you can grab that and see everything that you need in order to make this project and it's really a lot of fun so um just going to turn everything down here. Uh, so you will download this little PDF. And what we're working with today are some really simple supplies. So let me show you these germs up close. Now this one right here was made um, by Rachel, our designing artist. And I love it because it's pinks and oranges together, which is just a favorite combination of mine. So this is one of her originals. And then for today's tutorial, we're going to be making this little guy. And I basically just copied her design exactly um, so that we could honor that I was hoping to have time to make a few more but life has been interesting for the last week to say the least and we know that everyone is in a different situation what we want to do for this hour is hang out with you have a good time uh, and learn some needle felting building block basics. You're gonna learn some great tips and techniques in today if you're brand, brand new. Maybe if you're teaching someone else, it's also gonna give you some little you know, fundamental reminders that you can show 
others if they're just learning to needle felt. And hey, if you're felting with your kids or you're trying to communicate with your kids about what's going on right now or even your grandkids, these are just fun little reminders. I thought we could maybe put a little suction cup on the back of one and stick it on the bathroom mirror if you don't have a shelf or something. It's just a little reminder and um, we really just love that Rachel made him for her family and that she's a medical artist, which is in, I think just think is interesting in and of itself for sure. So let's look at the supplies we're going to be working with really fast and hopefully, yep, yeah, there we go. Okay, so we are working with our MC1 batting and the specific colors that I have today are blue azul. This is Caspian blue, which is a little more turquoise. This is uh, leaf green, which is straight up like crayon green, and then this one is cobalt. So those are the colors that I chose for my little germ. And then we're gonna be working with our core wool. You can use the roving or batting. The only difference between the two is the roving comes off in a long strip like this. It's the exact same product. So once you have all of your fibers, then uh, just all we need are some felting needles and I have a collection right here. You might decide to use a tool of some kind. I'm going to use a sharpie, some coffee stirs to make my little sign and then I just cut out a little piece of cardstock and some straight up Elmer's glue or you know whatever works for you. So that's all we really need to get going. Okay so Thank you all for being here. If you're excited about the video today, whether you're watching the live show or the playback, right underneath the video, not in the chat window, you can give us a little thumbs up and we hope that you'll leave your comments. We do drawings at the end of every show. So we're gonna give away some prizes to the live group and we will um, give those away at the end. So that's lots of fun. And thanks for everyone who participated last week too. We gave away some stuff um, for those watching after and posting comments. So if you're watching the playback, post comments because we're going to give away a prize from the commenters as well. Cool. All right. So here's what we're going to do first is we're going to needle felt a ball. And this is one of the most basic shapes to learn and it's gonna to help to make it fairly firm. If you learn to make it fairly firm, then you're gonna be able to get like a nice smooth finish on your end product. Um, but we won't worry about that till we get a little further in because we have all kinds of nubs and bumps to put on our guy. Let's see, where's my germ? Okay, so here, here's my germ. Okay, we ready, Anne? We are ready. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna put uh, my one little germ here. Let's see, we get them kind of in the, in the picture. This is our model. This is his girlfriend. <laughs> if y'all are felting along with us, give us a hashtag felt along. Whether you're watching the playback, you know, or the live show, both count. And I'm just going to look for your comments here. Bear with me. Joan says, oh my goodness, this is the perfect kids project. I think it is too. I think it's really good for kids. So the first thing we want to do is needle felt a ball. And what I like to do is just take a length of roving, and I know y'all are going to ask me how much this weighs. You know, start with a half an ounce or about an 18 inch long length or something like that. The best thing when you want to make something firm is to build it up in layers. So the very first thing we do, if I have a big blunt, if like if one end is more blunt and the one end that I tore off is tapered, I'm going to start that blunt in on the inside so it's easier to work with. Curl this in like real tight. Fold this in, fold this in, and press all while you roll and tuck. If you roll and tuck, then you won't get folds. And also, if you have a nice firm surface, this is our Earth Harmony needle felting foam. If you have a nice firm surface, then you can push air out while you roll, and that's gonna require you to needle felt less. It's easier if you press more while you roll. Okay, now Anne and um, our off-site producer, my beautiful husband, Ronnie Jean, will be feeding me your questions. Now, you can press like that, and you can also roll it in your hand. Um, just remember you don't want it to get these big squishy ends. You want to keep you want to keep tucking those ends into the roll so that they just kind of disappear and you roll the outside wool over it. So keep the tension. If you lose the tension or it's hard to hold on to, especially for little hands, moms, if you're teaching your little ones, um, stop and needle felt along the way. So I'm using a coarse needle and I'm gonna zoom in here just a little bit so you can see a little more closely what we're doing. 
as soon as I find my, I've lost my Zoom. Um, what, what we're going to do is um, needle felt these edges in here. Mm -hmm. And we're going to come on in right now. Okay, there we go. Thank you. So you can start needle felting it before you let go and before you get to the end, just to kind of tack it in place and hold things down. So just a little bit and then squish all of that off. So wrap all that loose end around and needle felt it down. Now this is great for a first time needle felting project, absolutely. You can see the one that, the ones that Hannah brought and how old? Uh, 10. Is, yeah, just 10. He's just 10 and he made that cute little germ. Did she leave it in here so we could show it again? Well, we'll bring those back in so y'all can see them as well. You can see the other germs that the gals made. So now if this is difficult for you using one needle, if you have a multi-needle tool, you could use something like this. This is the Clover Pen Tool. It holds three needles at a time. The needles in there are more fine. I think that at this stage, you're going to do a little better using a coarse needle to really hammer all that stuff down. This is probably about a half ounce of wool. I'm just starting small. I like to make the center core not more um, than I can kind of plunge my needle to the center of. And we're always just needle felting to the center, to the center, to the center. Now building your core shapes uh, take a little bit of time because you don't want it to be lumpy and bumpy and loose like this. I like it to be fairly uniform. So take your time and um, make it fairly uniform. This is not rock hard, but I am really, I'm squishing with all the strength of these two fingers right now and it isn't disappearing away. Um, so you want it to be semi-firm and Patty Boy says she needs a laugh. Did she miss the corny joke? No, um, Kayla is not with us on the live show today. So sorry, but we'll have to have her bring a double corny joke um, next week. And um, Pat, Patricia Davis says, can we create a wet felted ball as an option? Yes, absolutely. You can wet felt your balls if you like. I don't spend too much time on mine. Like notice that you can still see all the needle felt marks. This is totally fine because we're going to be putting an outside cover of it. And I am working right now with my pink 36 triangle needle. When you're building a nice firm core shape, go for a more coarse needle to start. You want this fairly firm. So a 36 triangle or a 32 triangle would be my choice. Okay, and then um, Sweet Karen says, well, we keep posting videos during the week. Yes, we will, we will do our best to post some more videos. It's been a pretty um, busy time for us with a lot going on, but we're going to do our best to keep posting more videos. Chantal asks, what's the youngest age you would needle felt? And I would say it really depends on the child. I've seen kids that are, um, I've seen kids that are nine who are too distracted and too reckless with the felting needles and I've had six-year-olds sit with focus and diligence and really pay attention. So I would say make sure that the child will follow direction. Make sure that they will keep their eye on what they're doing and they can focus. And I would use that more than age but I would always have an adult supervise while you're felting with the little ones. You really got to know the child. So don't have more kids than you can supervise. All right y'all let's get this thing <laughs> covered. Okay. Here we go. This is just my core wool. Core wool is designed to be on the inside and now we're going to put our wool, our design layer on. So for my design layer, I'm going to do this little blue face right here. Let's move his sign for a second. I'm going to do a blue face and that's our blue azul and then I'm going to do the Caspian on the, this is Caspian as his outside little shell here. So you can do either the outside wrap or the face first. This is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to put the blue on the face first. We might be just a little bit close. I'm going to come out one for you guys so y'all aren't too, too blasted up close. Let us know how that visual looks for you now that we've just made a little adjustment and pulled back. I'm going to take a tiny bit of this wool here for the face patch. Let's call this is a ball and now we're going to make a little patch. I'm just going to pull off a thin layer. It's a very thin layer of this wool. And then I'm going to pull off these wispy ends and just kind of make, 
make this a little bit rounded. This doesn't have to be totally even. What we want to do is just make a little area that's going to be the face, just like that. Now, this is a great time for your clover punch tool, something like this. Especially this is a great tool for kids because it's nice and safe and has this little guard on it so they um, don't get their fingers caught in there. But for me, my other adult friends, I like to use my 42 triangle cluster and just tack this all down. So while I tack, I'm going to read some of your questions. Katie says, have you ever started a ball by tying a knot? Yeah, I've tried that. I think, you know, I've been doing it the same way for going on 20 years now, so I'm pretty happy, you know, doing it how I do it, but I have seen that some people like to tie a knot. Um, Brenda says, is the ball you're making going to be the color of the germ or do you put color on top? So I think we're answering that now. And then what is the diameter of the ball? You know what, I'll, I'll get out a tape measure in just a moment so you can see how big that is. It's definitely smaller than a tennis ball. Definitely smaller than a tennis ball. Um, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Thanks y'all for being here. Uh, so, Kathy shares she's going to make these with her grandkids. Oh, that's so sweet. They're pretty fun. I, I really enjoyed making mine and I could definitely make some more. Okay, so now we're going to cover the outside, the rest, and I'm going to have the wool come around uh, and cover this area that's still white. And so again with this fiber, we're going to take a real thin, this is a thin layer. Our batting is naturally fairly thick, so you can split the thickness. And I like to do what I just call piecing, which is basically, you know, a fancy way of saying eyeball it. <laughs> so the thickness should just be such <clears throat> that you don't see the color underneath. So wrap it around. <clears throat> To mute here in a second. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I needed a drink. Anne's, Anne's on the job. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to wrap this around and then pull off whatever is the excess. So just like that. Wrap, make sure you have a nice overlap and then with this, if you're working with something like our batting, it's just going to separate and pull off really easily. Again, this is our MC1 batting and look, in the back we have a lot more than we need. If you do the same method of sort of like using your hand and pinch it together, you can just pull that off. And with batting, you can cover up any thin areas and you just by doing another patch over the top. That's just kind of the magic of this stuff. So what I'm going to do then to line this face a little bit is use my needles here and just needle felt that wool around in a circle. And I'm going to start here because this is where I want to control the shape as opposed to starting on the back. And I'm going to poke this down just a little bit so we can jump to our next pieces and I'm going to answer a few questions right now. Daniela says, why batting versus roving? And Daniela, it's a great question. So for many of you might be used to working with roving because that's what you have available where you are. And we do sell a lot of roving and you will see, well, we call it roving, but let's be clear. Most things out there like the New Zealand Corriadel is actually a sliver. There is roving on the market, but a lot of stuff that is actually a sliver uh, is called roving. Um, but the reason we use our batting is because this particular product has been designed for wet felting and needle felting. It's a nice, short, crimpy fiber. And if you work with it, you'll find that it needle felts very, very smoothly. Most sliver or roving on the market is a little more hairy, and it actually takes a little more effort to make it nice and smooth. And so we work with this because it just is going to give you such a beautiful finish. It comes in like over 90 colors and is just just real easy to work with. So here this is just a little bit extra and you can peel that pick that off as well. Is the is the visual okay? Do we need to come in a little bit? In a little okay. Anne's gonna bring us in just a little y'all. And I appreciate your question so much. Lori Harper says what is the yellow bunch of needles you're using? This is a, a three 42 triangle needles rubber banded together. And we learned that from Jennifer Field, who was also a Living Felt customer and a teacher. She uses a lot of Living Felt, this batting, in her classes. And she does some really cool art. She's also a lamp work glass artist. 
Um, and she came up with this little invention, so we use it and share it all the time. Okay, so what you're going to do is keep needle felting this fiber till it's fairly smooth. You don't have to needle felt it. Um, you don't have to needle felt it completely. I'm going to come back and show you at the end how to fill in the spots where there are no lumps and bumps. If you look at this guy, I'll show you how to fill in the spot where there's no lumps and bumps. Um, and get those nice and nice and smooth. So for now, needle felt this until you're happy and you don't want to be able to see any of that white underneath. If you do, just put another little patch right on top if you have our batting or whatever you have and needle felt that down as well. Okay? Now, what we want to do for this little guy, for mine, I just trimmed the face with a little bit of dark blue, so I'm going to do that. And I know that, okay, so some people are asking, Alice says, what's the difference between Sliver and Roving? And I will tell you, we do have a video out there. I don't know if it's on YouTube or on our Facebook page. I'm going to pull off a thin strip right here. Um, the difference between Sliver and Roving is Roving like batting. Let me say that again. Roving like batting is processed on a drum carter and the difference is how it comes off the carter so whereas a batting is going to come off the drum carter in a uh, let me just look at it for a second the batting is going to come off a drum carter in a great big sheet if you're making roving instead then it's usually diverted off some side of the machine if it's done in a big mill like where our stuff is made and comes off in this length instead so when we make our core wool let me grab my jar when we make our batting the bats come off in these huge sheets that then get cut down like they're really really big sheets but when we make roving instead it comes off into this long length so the really the only difference between a batting and roving is how it comes off the drum carter whereas with a sliver it's processed in a different way um, when it's done at the small maker level, they're um, running it through combs and removing all the short fibers. And at the larger level, that just happens with different machinery. So a sliver, all the fibers are really aligned and straight, and the short fibers should be removed. But you can have a sliver of a short fiber. You can. You can have a sliver of a short fiber. If you buy our yak, you would know what I mean. So it's a short fiber that's been processed into a sliver. But all the fibers are aligned. In a batting or a roving, they tend to be more mixed up. So that's why a batting tends to felt more readily, and even a true roving does, because the fibers are a little more mixed up. So we do share that often, that a lot of sellers um, have adopted the more common language of calling lots of things roving, even though they're not. Okay, I'm going to trim my face here. And for those who are expecting a straight-up tutorial, wait, uh, welcome to Wooly Wednesday, where we just answer anything. <laughs> While we work, we answer anything. Um, someone asked, Teresa asked, how did I get into felting? And um, there was a brief, brief time where I tried to watch television. I tried to watch HGTV, and I saw this lady that needle felted dolls, and I just had to try it and bring some of my crazy characters to life in wool. So, changed my life. <laughs> absolutely changed my life. Now I gave this person a big face frame, this person, <laughs> this germ, a big a big face frame. I just wanted to trim mine. You don't have to do that. This little pink guy next to me doesn't have a little face frame, but I just wanted to give him like a little a little face window. Um, so here's the pink guy. It's just uh, like a our pink orchid with sort of a berry pink uh, around the face and in this case um, this guy his is a little bit wider so what you want to do is just get the face color on and the main body color on and once you get those two in place then what we're going to do is start making some other parts and those are these little um, beads and the legs and the arms so work on your balls and we're going to start making our little um, our little germy nubs Jeremy nubs and arms, and the arms just help it hold the sign. Let me see if I can. I'm gonna grab a tape measure. Can't find one. Okay, it will, we'll try and get a measure of the ball for you, Barb, uh, as soon as we can. Uh, so fun. Linda, Connie, Wendy, and Darlene are felting germs along with us today. 
Oh, Rodney says face cam. Thank you, Rodney. It's an interesting show today. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> I'm talking like I'm <laughs> face cam. Thank you, Rodney. It's an interesting day. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to needle felt some uh, little beads and balls. Um, and I was trying to show, sorry, y'all, that um, around this face, I've just trimmed it a little blue, but the little pink guy didn't have any face trim at all. Um, and on this one, just keep working on yours and get all that fairly smooth, but you don't have to take it to the nth degree. What we want to do is make our nubs, our arms, and our feet, if this is how you want to make yours. And if there's some other shape you want us to show you, now's the time. So to make little beads, it's going to be very much like the large beads. You only need a smaller amount. And we're not going to needle felt these 100% because you're going to shape them on your germ. So I'm going to put my beads aside. Okay, and then we're just going to take a little strip and you're going to make a smaller bead. Now we have a wet felting bead uh, tutorial as well if you want to make a whole bunch of beads. And I think that for needle felting something on like this germ, I would still needle felt them rather than wet felt them. It just has kind of a different feel. So make your bead and then we're just going to tack it into place and I'm just using my 42 triangle or a 38 triangle like a medium fine needle something to that effect because I'm going to squash them down onto my germ so you see how the 42 needle doesn't do much and I know that y'all are always asking us like what needles that might be hard to see I'm gonna pick it I'm gonna make a different color one um, so if you notice, if you feel like your needle's not doing very much, then grab a more aggressive needle. If you're not sure about the needles that you have, we do have a little um, needle guide on our, on our needle felting, felting needles page on our website that will help you try and corral the needles you have into a fine, medium, and coarse category. So start with a little bit, do a little tiny roll. Patricia says, so imaginative. These little balls don't need to be all that firm, Stephanie. I mean, just kind of get them to a nice round shape if you want them to have like the little globules on them. Just get them to a nice round shape. And for those of you who are just starting, notice that when you make something like this, you just want to go to the middle. You don't want to go through to the other side. You, when you're making a small bead, you shouldn't be hitting the foam. Just go to the middle. Mary Ellen says, can you cut the bat to fit your shape or does it always need to be torn? You can cut the batting, you absolutely can. But what happens is it's a lot easier to uh, blend areas when you taper it off with a tear. It's just going to make it less blunt and that's the one reason to do that. So these balls actually don't need to be very firm because you can shape them up so I can squish these down. See all of these I've made? because you can shape them on your beast. But see, this little guy actually ends up being really quite, he's really quite firm because we work him as we apply this stuff on. So make yourself a set of beads or balls or whatever you wanna call them. And like I said, if there's any other shapes you wanna know, ask us. We're gonna make um, these little feet next. And they're like a bead, but they're a little bit bigger and I'm leaving one end kind of open and nubby. Chantal says, if you don't have core wool, can you use the same color wool? Yes, absolutely. Core wool is just to help you save your dyed wool because it's cheaper. So to make my feet, notice I made mine a little bit bigger, almost like a thumb, <laughs> almost like a little thumb, little thumb size. So it's a little bit past my knuckle. I'm going to just make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to start rolling it, sort of like in a roll, tuck the end in, and I'm going to end up leaving this end a little bit more loose. So tuck the top and keep this part firm. So can you kind of see that? It's funky. It's funky and loose. But now I'm going to use my fine needle to kind of hide all those folds that I made and just generally start shaping this. You don't want any folds to show. So if there's any loose bit, just pull it over the top 
and then just start shaping this into like a nub, kind of like a thumb. You just want to hide any folds. And if you had to, you could patch right back over it. So the 42 helps kind of do that to start. And then I'm go go to a little more coarse needle because we want this leg to be firm. And we're kind of making like a long bead with a tail end. Remember, needle felt to the middle. You could also just use a large bead. You don't have to make it like a leg. You could use, um, you could use, I don't know, you could give them chenille stems. You could have a germ with long legs, anything you want. You, your germ could be flat. Should the beads be all different sizes? I think you should do whatever you want. Who knows what germs really look like? Now, I asked Rachel, because she's a medical artist, I said, so, oh, is this particular thing blue <laughs> and green? She said it's really up to the artist's interpretation, which I thought was really interesting. I'm like, oh, so there's not a bunch of rules about that. So uh, she has some really cute ones that have some large beads and some small ones, so I say have fun with it. Okay, so check this out. When you get to this part of your leg, you can flare this out a little bit and needle felt, if you needle felt down into the center of that area, like right down into the center, it's going to firm up this length. Like that. It's going to firm it up this way, not just this way. So it tends to make it a little more stubby. And now if your leg ends up being too long, you could always tear off this extra bit. So before I put it on my little germ, I'm going to go around, even using my little cluster tool, and I'm going to firm this up nice and smooth and smooth and firm and smooth and firm. So the best thing to do is to not needle felt in one place for too long. Keep rolling it and moving it. So I'm going to answer a question by Snare Taps. She asks about our foam and says, how long would the foam board last considering how much I needle felt? Does it break down a few weeks or months or can it last longer? Um, so the answer to that is, if you'll notice the way I'm needle felting right now, I'm not even going into the foam. So I'm doing these 3D items and the foam might be catching some fiber, but I'm not even hitting the foam. That's going to make it last a long time. Another thing that will make it last a long time is if you don't embed wool into it. If you're doing a bunch of 2D work, um, where you're continuously plunging your needle into the foam like this, you can expect that if you don't clean it or move that piece repeatedly, that you're going to start to take chunks out of the foam. So a lot of it's going to be how you use it. And if you want to make it last longer, one thing you can do is put either a piece of fabric or a piece of felt over your foam so that it's just a little bit more of a barrier and something else um, that will kind of capture the wool. Cindy asks, how often do you clean your foam? I clean it each time after I use it. And I just use, we just use lint rollers to clean the foam. So, let's see, I know I have one. This is, we did, we did a little video on it a few years back. So when you've got stuff on your, on your foam and you're all done or if like you're changing colors, then just go in here and roll right over it with your, your little rolly thing. So just use a, a good sticky lint roller. A non-sticky one won't work very well. Okay, so it was asked, do we want to make these nubs more firm? Katie says, do you want to make them more firm than the nubs? Um, not necessarily. You just want them like nice and smooth. They don't have to be all that firm. Okay, so let's make one more thing. We've made some beads and we've made some nubs. Now we're going to make them some arms and I've made the arms kind of a little more firm. So this is what my arm looks like, and you're, who knows what your arm will look like, but we want a little arm to help us hold on to our sign. And um, I'm gonna use my skewer right here. Let's see, this one, here's a skewer, okay. So I'm, I'm gonna use a skewer, and I like to use a skewer for lots of shapes, and um, I do wanna answer also Aggie's question who asked about um, making a triangle and Aggie would you uh, would you please maybe elaborate on what kind of triangle you're wanting to make and I'll see if I can make one for us here so let me get my beads out of the way for those who are just joining us we're making germs today to remind us to wash our hands and we're gonna make 
arms for our little guy right now. So I like to use just like a wooden shish kebab skewer and I just put my a little thin piece of wool. You want it a little longer than you're going to need it. Should be a little longer than you're going to need it. If it's too long, you can cut the end off. Um, but the key is here, you want to wrap it around your skewer, use your thumb to hold it down, and twist it towards you. You want it to be even. Now if you've got little hands trying to do this, you want it to be even. If you've got little hands trying to do this, try helping them lay it down on the foam, and it helps if this top part is even. If that top part is uneven, it's going to be hard to get an even roll. So if you have little hands, you can try and help them roll it this way. And you can also wrap around a chenille stem, which we use often. In this case, I just didn't even want to bother with a chenille stem. So wrap it around your skewer nice and evenly. And I'm looking for your questions. How many beads? I have no idea. We would have to count. <laughs> Notice this, y'all. I'm pulling this tight. Look, this is a short fiber, so if I pull too tight, I'm going to rip it. Roving or sliver that is of a longer staple length, that's probably less risk. But we want it to be firm so that we don't um, have to needle felt. It's almost impossible to needle felt all that air out. But if it's firm first, you can get it compact pretty quick. And I'm just going to make this, it's, I don't know, I only count how many rolls I've gotten, like one complete about two and a half complete rolls before I just back my hands off and pull it off just like that. Now if you have our batting what you're going to notice is that you can twist it in your hands and dry felt it a little bit without even having to needle felt it yet and it's going to stay in place. If you have a sliving or a rover that won't um, stay like that well then needle felt it faster before you let go. Okay? So I will count, we'll count our beads here in a minute. Now, while it's still on the skewer, having, we're going to needle felt it and notice the angle. If you have little hands and you want to teach them to do this, use a chenille stem instead. And we, we do a lot with chenille stems. You can just watch our video two weeks ago where we made these little um, Waldorf dolls. Uh, let's see, like, like this. Um, or our gnome video because we made the core with the chenille stem and wool wrapped around it and it'll be they'll have less chance of breaking a needle uh, whereas they might break a needle on the wood skewer but adults you can keep your angle nice and shallow like this and avoid hitting that skewer so go from one end up notice I'm not touching the ends yet I'm not needle felting these little parts right here give yourself one finger length Flip it over and go from this direction. Okay, I'm going to see if I can make a cone for Aggie and see if it's like what you want. And I'm going to jump to that right after we make this arm. Oh, Heather says, how about little beads attached onto the big beads? That sounds so cute. That sounds really cute, actually. You guys are so creative. Okay, so all I'm doing, I'm using like my 38, uh, this is a 38 triangle, which is a little more aggressive, and I'm just doing that to kind of get the shape in place, or to get the firmness and the density, and now I'm going to go back with my 42 triangle. The reason is the 42 triangle is the key to getting something smooth and not showing needle marks, but if it's firm first, you're more likely to achieve that. So either the under part needs to be firm like the core wool or this under layer and you're just going to do shallow shallow pokes with your 42 triangle needle and start smoothing that out now let's form this little arm bit and all I'm going to do is scooch it off the the stick just enough um, and if you're doing the chenille stem watch last week's how we did the little arms because you would do it different I'm going to scooch it off just to where I want the hand to be and all this stuff right here I'm just going to start needle felting right into it. Needle felt it down. I'm using a fine needle so I'm not creating any great big movements with the wool. I'm just trying to guide all that loose fluff into a shape that I like which is semi-rounded and once you sort of coax it with a fine needle then if you want you can hit it with a more aggressive needle. So something like a 30, maybe even a 40 triangle or something. I'm going to start to form a little wrist kind of thing, like a little indent here, right where it's, I want it to be right where it's coming off the skewer. So 
this needle plunging into this loose wool will really start to do that. So take your time and continue, you know, shaping this, but notice that if you want it to not look rough, if you want it to look smooth, then be gradual about it and be willing to use your fine needle and go back over it. So I'm going to jump to this one, which I spent just a few more minutes on than this one. And I'm just going to finish it up so we can take them off. And let's see what else. Okay, following y'all's questions. Thank you for, for hanging out with us. If y'all are having fun so far, or hey, how about if you've learned something new, um, tell us, you know, some like takeaway that you have already. Maybe if you're going to make a germ, if you've decided that you want to make one, tell us what colors you're thinking to make your first one in. Love to hear what you all are going to make. Okay, so I am notice that I'm forming this pretty well on the skewer, but then at some point we want to push it off and you can continue needle felting it and making it a little more dense off the skewer. Again, you want to just keep trying to go to the middle, to the middle, to the middle, um, so that you don't poke, if you poke through the other side, it's going to get fuzzy. Okay? Now, before I jump, let's see if we can make a cone. I don't know if it'll be a total triangle, but I will show you, um, Aggie, how I make a cone. And let's make it in a different in a different color. We'll use this Caspian. So to make a cone, we're going to use the skewer again. And I like to form it right on the skewer, so I'll show you how I do it. We'll start with a nice smooth end here. And you can even start with like just a nice even strip, the same size all the way down. I'm going to put my thumb right on that corner, just on the back corner, and I am going to use this finger to hold tension on just this bottom part of the wool here, and I'm going to twist that very, very tight. I'm going to let the top flare out a little bit and be a little more open. Oh, Joanne says she's going to make a purple, orange, and yellow. <laughs> okay, so now. I have a little bit of a cotton candy thing happening here. And see how the end is pointy and the top's a little more loose. Use your fingers and form that. Now what we're going to do is needle felt just a little bit while it's on the skewer and get all those layers attached. Shallow layers go in this way from the big loose end down. get everything formed so that those all you want the entire top layer to be adhered if you will felted together at least the outer layer so that it's going to hold its shape and you can keep adding wool to this if you want it to be more dense but what you do is you kind of push it off and while it's still on the skewer then you're going to go down right into that top just like that and that's going to make it a little more dense so once you start to dense it up on the skewer that way, then you're going to go back in and keep making it more dense this way. Be real purposeful in your strokes, noticing that I'm, I'm going towards that point all the time. And notice that I'm going this direction instead of this direction. I'm forcing all the wool to compress down towards the point, and that's going to make it more dense in that direction, as opposed to stretching it out this way, which is just going to needle felt towards air. And if you keep doing this, you can form a real nice shape on the skewer. Um, and then it's going to be nice and firm when you take it off. I think we should assemble our guy. Um, oh, Candy says her germ is going to be a deep purple with lime green on it. <laughs> oh, cute, 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 cute. So Lynn asks, how do we attach Angelina if we want to make crazy hair? And I tell you what, we'll see if we can grab some of that out of our classroom bin um, and then add some at the very end. So for Katie or um, Aggie right here, this is our little cone shape. And I would needle felt it more before um, attaching it onto the little guy. But this way, you could have two little uh, you know, cone-shaped legs here if you keep needle felting them and hopefully that kind of gets you to what you were wanting. That's how I would do it right on the skewer. Uh, Aggie 
says, thanks, Marie. What a perfect comb. <laughs> cool. All right, so let's work on our little guy. Now, I have one that I kind of started here. So here is the same base that I showed you, a blue face. I have one little nobule on the face. That's going to be his nose. And then I put one of his little, you know, warts right on there. And so let's get these attached. Now, I did find that it helps to know where's the top and where's the bottom so you don't get lost. So you can go ahead and attach the legs first if you want. And notice this little fluffy outfits that we had. We left those there. And this is fairly firm. They're not rock hard. I mean, this is like a little shelf sitter. You're going to get tired of them maybe after a while. It's not like something you're going to keep around for 100 years. <laughs> but put one on right on there. And now you can use your 38 triangle or 38 star. Or you could even use your 36. And we're just going to needle felt right into that loose fluff there to start. And notice that I'm even going into the shaft of the leg a little bit. And we're going to needle felt it right into the body. Get one side done and then flip it around and do the other side. Just needle felt right up the length of that leg there. Okay, and now we're going to take all this loose bit. You can use a more aggressive needle or your same 38 that you were just working with and just take all that loose bit and just needle felt it, anchor it right in underneath the leg. Just tuck it all underneath there. You already have a really nice, you know, firm attachment where you put it and now you're just going to hide all of that under there. So get both of your legs on and then we're going to give him a little bump on the bottom too so that he has like a little sort of little tripod thing happening. Okay, so now let's add our other leg nub. Thanks y'all for being here. I know how many of y'all are at home right now, so just give us a hashtag. Oh, well, probably you're at home, not at work. Ha -ha, you're, if, you're, if you're at work watching well, don't tell. But <laughs> If this is your first time watching the show, give us a hashtag, I'm new, so the gang can welcome you. We have a really fun community on Facebook where after the show, lots of people will be sharing their germs and stuff. So so you can find us um, over there. I'll just pop that up real quick. A beautiful, beautiful community. Absolutely welcome, or loving to welcome new people and cheer you on with all of your creations. And we also like to share yours in our weekly newsletter. You can join that on our website. Um, we also like to share what people make on our um, Instagram page. We share a lot of our customers' work on Instagram. Um, so we hope that you guys will visit us there too. And everything that we're, we're working with today comes from our shop, uh, Living Felt. We ship out of Texas. We ship every day. Um, right now, we're still shipping. If we get impacted by that, we will absolutely post a notice on our website. Okay, so let's get these little extra bits tucked in here. Um, <laughs> Tammy says, how do I not accidentally poke myself? Uh, how do I need to not actually poke myself? The truth is, Tammy, that now I bleed very little because I've poked myself so many times. <laughs> so if I'm not paying attention, I'm going to poke myself just like anyone else. I just, my fingers have like given up the, the boo-boo bleeding. They're like, we're done. Okay, so now we have two little legs on this guy and he's off to a start. He's going to be a little TV tripod. So I'm going to give him a little uh, tripod bump right back here. So let's put our first, our first bead on him so that he'll kind of sit up for us. And I'm going to put it right there, right about here somewhere. So these beads were, you know, pretty well formed. Um, if y'all are having fun, give us a hashtag. This is fun. I really don't know because I'm just here like talking to myself for an hour. <laughs> uh, somehow it's justified because there's a camera in front of me. But I really appreciate you all being here and I can't wait to see what germs you make. So notice I'm just needle felting right around this ball. And, you know, firming up all of your little beads and bumps is something you can come back and do. Like, you can just get them all in place. But now I'm using the 36 triangle all the way instead of the other one. I'm going to really anchor that in. And I'm getting underneath there as well. I'm getting right underneath there and needle felting towards that center. And then, once you have it anchored on there, then you can come back and you can firm it up with another needle. You could even try your 42 cluster and see how you feel about that and just get it to really anchor down on there. 
Use, play with your needles and see what you like. See how you like how they feel. Try different ones and notice you know, how you like them because we all are gonna have different tastes. The two of us could be working in the kitchen together and we're gonna choose two different knives to do the same task. And needles really can be the same way, really very much. Okay, so we're gonna get a bunch of our nubs on here and I'm gonna look for your questions while we continue to work and just have fun with this y'all so um, don't worry too much about where they all go use your own aesthetic uh, judgment while you're working so here I'm using my um, 38 triangle um, to get all these balls attached and I'm gonna jump to we're gonna um, we're gonna get all of our beads attached I'm gonna show you um, just how we get the little tiny dots on the face and how we put the hands on and then I'm going to show you how to really smooth out your surface when you're ready. So much fun being had, so many fun <laughs> posting, hashtag this is fun. <laughs> oh good, I'm so glad, I'm so glad. I really appreciate Rachel's willingness to share this little project with us. It's, it's definitely a fun one. Okay, so now to put the arms on, you might decide that one arm is going to hold a sign for those of you who are just joining this little guy there, the little wash your hands guy. They could say all kinds of things. We saw some in Austin here, I'll tell you all really quick. So in Austin downtown, the downtown sector was boarded up. Uh, when the shops closed and they put up boards and muralists went in and made all these amazing murals. So one said like, love your neighbor and then the next to it said, at a distance. So when you make your little signs, what, you know, whatever those are, you know, play with that and have fun. So uh, think about which hand is going to hold the sign. And when you have your arms and they're all ready, like I'm going to put this one right about here and you can go ahead and bend it into the shape that you want. Uh, right where you want it. So this one is not going to hold the sign on my little guy. I'm going to start at the top right here and I'm just going to work with my 38 triangle. That's just fine. And I'm just going to shape it right around there. Just start needle felting right into that top and then go around it. So put it in the pose that you want and this is why you'll be glad that it's already a little more firm rather than loose and squishy and then it'll hold its shape real nice. So you're gonna needle felt right around that back little area there. And just attach it right to the body. And then we're gonna go around the front and do the same thing. So someone asked, should I worry about my germ getting wet? You know, I wouldn't take it in the bathtub. It's not a bath toy. <laughs> so, you know, is it, wool is going to absorb moisture and stuff, but it has these amazing uh, properties. Um, I We have, wool in our bathroom at home and here, no problem. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't worry about it. Okay, so just needle felt both your arms how you want them and if you want one to hold a sign then just leave a little pocket right there where you can stick that sign down in. So let's make our little face and um, I just use a little bit of black. I better put another another bead on him. He's lopsided to give him a little, <laughs> another little butt bead before I put his face on so he stays. Uh, so Courtney asked, what do we use for the sign? And I just use cardstock and a coffee stirrer and I'll bring that in here in just a moment. Like I said, you can just get all your beads on in a real draft mode and then go back and refine them and get all the little needle marks out. We're gonna look at that here in just a second. Okay, so here's our little guy. Let's give him a little face. You don't have to preform shapes to make little polka dots or things like that, like on our little face here. You can just take a blob, take a couple of blobs, put it right on the face where you want them, and these can be tiny or large, whatever you want. I liked Han the little face on one of Hannah's, it was really cute, the little eyeballs were super cute. But all you have to do is poke your needle into the spot, so with a little blob, poke your needle into the middle, and then twirl it around. If you twirl it around and you gather up all those loose fibers, you can make a nice round shape without having to preform it. And then just needle felt it flat on the face. So I thought Rachel's were so cute. That's why I decided to basically copy hers. Now trust me, y'all can take these in 800 different directions and have a lot of fun with it. I just really copied her same style for this tutorial 
And I think uh, I wanted to honor that. And then from there, you can just take them whatever direction you want. So I look forward to seeing some of those with the beads on beads and the, <laughs> and the, the cones for feet or like someone, Lynn Wright, asked for the Angelina crazy hair. Super fun. Okay. Uh, Evie says, this is fun. I will put one in the teacher's bathroom at my school. Oh, that's so cute. Cute, cute, cute. Okay. There. So that gives us a little face. And so why don't we look at, let's look at how we, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can show you how we get rid of needle marks because it's one of our most common questions. And so hopefully you'll be able to see the difference on here. Anne's going to zoom us in kind of quite tight, if you will. Uh, let's take it like just one more, Anne. Oh, good. That's good. Okay, so here's what I want to show y'all is the, the wool on this little guy is really quite compressed. I can rub my hands on him and the wool doesn't get loose at all. And he's also fairly firm. But I saved some spots back and I didn't felt them all the way. And you can see that if I poke on them a little bit that they kind of depress. Does that show? You can see that there's a little bit of air in here and it's not quite flat all the way. So um, this is the part, this is most people, not most people when they're just starting, they're very likely to stop here. And what I want you to notice about that is that I could pull it apart. I could pull it apart if I want to, whereas here it's laying down. It's really, really flat. So one of the keys to getting your pieces smooth is first, how firm is the underbase? Two, how good is the wool you have at the top? for being nice and smooth. I can tell you our MC1 batting is going to give you a nice smooth finish. But the second part is you need to compress all of this down and make it nice and flat. So I'm using again the 42 triangles and it's a real shallow stroke. Notice that I'm not I'm not pressing through to the middle. I'm just tacking it to that firm under layer. Just trying to compress all that down to the firm under layer. And then once you have it all nice and compressed, usually what those needle marks are are uneven compressions in the wool. Some of the wool is compressed down further than other parts. Once you have it all fairly level, then you go back with just a fine, like a 42 triangle needle, and enjoy the meditation of light, shallow pokes. Thousands, maybe hundreds of light, shallow pokes, turning your piece, varying the angle. And just rather than thinking of getting rid of the needle marks, think of needle felting all of the wool that doesn't look like it has a needle mark and compressing that down to the same level as the rest. Now, you don't have to be, you know, refined a germ to the nth degree, but it really makes a great practice piece. And if you needle felt these really well, they can actually be, you know, roughed around and tossed around and go in and out of bins and boxes and travel to, you know, for you to show and share or sell any of your sculptures. This is really a great technique builder for attaching things firmly, for making your piece really, you know, nice and getting rid of all those needle marks. So to get rid of them, then you can make your angles even more shallow, like almost like that. And once everything is really all the same level, then you would be able to rub it and not loosen up that wool and get rid of all your needle marks. But if the wool's still loose like this, then the wool's just gonna get roughed up. So compress all the wool first before resorting to rubbing. You can also flick a little bit with a needle, but again, the wool should really be compressed. Really be compressed before you rough it all up to get rid of needle marks. Cool. Okay, so now let's make a sign. And I brought with me some coffee sticks, little coffee stirs, and I just cut mine with scissors so that I basically cut it in half. And then I just took a little piece of square of cardstock and made my sign. What should this sign say? <laughs> I'm going to answer a couple questions while I hear what the sign should say. So uh, Debbie asks again, uh, do I need to worry about it getting wet? Don't, you know, don't go floating it in the bathtub. He should be, you know, up on a shelf somewhere or on a mirror. But if he gets a little bit of moisture, he's going to be okay. Um, 
Kelly says, can you over needle poke? You can over needle poke, especially with the coarse needles. So what I like to do is start with the very coarse. I like to do my top layer with a, a medium needle, like a 38 spiral or a 38 um, triangle or star. And then I like to switch to the finer needles, the 42 and the 42 cluster when I'm doing my finished work. Um, Okay, so do we have some sign suggestions? We do. What should it say? Cindy says, stay six feet apart. Darlene says, be happy. <laughs> Amy says, don't touch your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what should we say? What should we say? Don't touch your face. Keep calm and felt on. <laughs> Oh, Joanne says, I will grow on you. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I don't know if I like that prediction, but I like <laughs> Keep calm. Let's say we'll do this one and felt, felt on. We'll do that. All right, so this is all I did, and I just used a little, um, a little glue stick, and I just put it right on the put it right on the skewer instead of like fussing with putting it on the card, on the skewer, the, you know, the coffee stirrer, and just stick them all in there. Stick her down, and you can do a double card star. Don't touch your face. I know there's so many things we can say for sure. Here, he's going to say keep calm and felt on. If that that should get us uh, through this through this time, a little a happy little reminder to keep to keep calm and and felt on, and wash your hands at the same time in between seeing all, all your friends. So we really look forward to seeing what you all make with yours. We hope that you'll share your germs. I'm going to post the group uh, real quick again. If you're not in our Facebook group, consider um, joining it, Living Felt Friends on Facebook. Such a fun group. There's a couple of questions you have to answer so we know you're a real person. No blank heads. We like to have like non non-anonymous people. We're going to give away some prizes and usually now we're all in here drawing drawing prizes. We're going to do our our social distancing. Here's what we want to do y'all is um, for everyone who's left comments on the show today uh, what we do is we draw prizes and we're going to send you a goodie box. So if you're in our customer database that means you've ever ordered something from us uh, even a free download and we have free downloads under the learn section on our website then we're going to send you a prize and we're going to be sending away um, today what we're going to be sending away is one of our new little mini studio packs and uh, a little bit of core wool so that you can make your own projects you might like um, making gnomes you might like to try the dolls we did last week you might like to try making germs there's so many things you can make with a little studio pack and um, some core wool. That's what we'll be sending out for our prizes. So we're gonna draw a couple of names right now. And then if you are watching the playback or even if you watch the live show and you don't win, leave a comment down below and let us know what was something either new you learned today or your favorite takeaway from the show. And we're gonna send out, oh, let's do two more. Uh, so right now we're gonna draw three names. How are we gonna do this with our fancy social distancing? We don't know. I think you stand on that side. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna there you go. We're, we're practicing. And, there you go. And if you want to. I'm okay. We've been together all week. I think we're all right. We live together. We kind of to live together, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. I want to do a shout out to. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So I, I meant to show you all this. So this is in the background. Before we draw our prizes, we want to say a huge thank you to Sari Butler. Yes. Sari. Thank you. <laughs> Sari is in our community and she made us this awesome picture. So instead of E equals MC squared, this says LF for Living Felt. So people call us LF for short, equals MC1. And that's the batting that we've been working with today. This is just such an awesome thing. She routes her frames out. Out, and then this felt is needle felted onto an inset in the frame and the back says it doesn't take a genius to know MC1 is genius <laughs> many blessings sorry Butler the scarlet lamb and we love it it's gonna be in the shop so y'all can visit if you come see it okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> such a wacky show okay so here we go we're gonna draw some prizes right now do you want to hold that okay okay first I have a one is <laughs> Is going to be EVU. Yes. <laughs> EVU. Yay. Yay. Okay, let's draw another one. Go for okay. it. Oh. Off All right. it. I might want to spring it. Alrighty. 
Barbara Carr. Woo! Yay! Barbara. All right, one more. One more? Yeah. And the last winner for today is Karen Martin. All right. Yay! Congratulations, everyone. Thank you so much for felting with us today. Be well, stay safe, wash your hands, don't touch your face, <laughs> do your social distancing, and mostly stay happy. I think joy, mm -hmm. laughter, fun is just so important. Mm -hmm. So we are just uh, keeping a good light and good thoughts for everyone, all of you everywhere. Thanks guys so much. Bye y'all. Thank Bye. you.